So this is a very artificial grassland here in the subtropics. There is absolutely nothing natural about this. Um, you can see a little bit of a tree belt that remains back here in the background. Everything else has been logged and taken out. And then uh, this grass, what you have in a natural grassland is mixed grasses. It's actually quite beautiful in natural grassland. When I was driving across the prairies of South Dakota, I was stunned at the beauty of the subtle variations of grass in a natural grassland and the, the variety. We don't have that here. What we have is one single species of grass. This is an African uh, invasive variety that is just pretty much known for its ability to mat down into the shallow, poor subtropical soil and create a very thick mat that doesn't allow anything else to uh, germinate or take hold. Um, it's very poor food for cows. The cows here tend to be very thin and malnourished and uh, are really just prone to a lot of parasites and things that they get here in the tropics because it's very warm and humid and it's just really not their climate. Um, so at any rate, there's, I just want to show you there's nothing. It looks very pretty. It's green. It's verdant. Uh, but the soil underneath is extremely poor, lacking in organic matter. If you take out the grass, it's uh, just an absolute mudslide where the, the cows come through in the rainy season. And then it's just a cracked, dry, desert-like thing in uh, the dry season. So it really just doesn't belong here. Another thing about these pastures is that they are very wildlife poor. Uh, most of the wildlife that is endemic and native to this area, which this should be a cloud forest, and the cloud forest is of the Choco Andino where we are is the most biodiverse, arguably the most biodiverse biosphere in the entire world. 35% of the species on the planet live in 1% of the land on the globe that is a cloud forest. And we should have a cloud forest here, but instead we have these pastures. And um, the life that belongs here would be tree life. Sloths, anteaters, jaguars, ocelots, tigrillos, hawks, eagles, owls, uh, toucans, iguanas, tree lizards, all sorts of things, orchidias, all the m amazing things that live in trees that cannot live here. So I am, I'm not an advocate for trees for trees sake. I'm a forest advocate where forests belong and forests definitely belong here in the subtropical cloud forest of Ecuador. Now on this side of the road, literally I just crossed the road, we have the cow pasture over here and there's my backpack. And on the other side of the road, we have the other problem that plagues the subtropics and the tropics here is uh, a palmito plantation. This is a huge, vast monoculture. It stretches on for probably over a hundred hectares, which would be about 225 acres of land all covered in one species, these little palm trees that are harvested very early. The, the stalk is cut out and it's used to make those little hearts of palm that you can put on your salad. I mean, you wouldn't think it was such a big thing, right? Heart of palm, I mean, how much heart of palm do people eat? But it only, the, this tree, uh, the palmito tree only grows in a very narrow belt around the equator and it needs massive amounts of rain. So a very small part of the world is furnishing all of the palmito or all of the heart of palm for the rest of the world. Um, but again, very wildlife poor. Um, you get more birds in here, but only birds that live at one level. Uh, there's not that many tall trees. Everything is just kept on one level. And um, again, it's just a pure monoculture. The, the worst thing about it, as far as I'm concerned, is that there's really nothing in here to eat. Uh, young men come in and they harvest here all day. The, tr the trunks of the palmito are extremely spiny. It's very hard, dangerous work. And you got like a huge farm with basically no food. It's just all grown for export and uh, it's sold at extremely rock bottom exploitative prices. So again, um, two things that we really don't want here are pastures and huge monocultures. And unfortunately where we live, that is really the story of the day. So we are doing everything in our power to change that and bring back forests, and not just forests, but forests that where people can also live and thrive and eat and sell goods and everything can thrive together. Nature, plants, animals, and also people animals.
Hey folks, so thank you so much if you've subscribed. We recently hit 500 subscribers, little tiny milestone here on YouTube. So if you wanna help the channel grow, that is the best way to do it. Please subscribe and help us hit that thousand, thousand subscriber mark. YouTube's already got ads on all my videos. So please help us get to a thousand. Um, we also have a Patreon page and that is what helps to fund these videos, pay for our internet, my time and energy out here making these videos for you guys because we really want to spread the word about agroforestry. So please check out our Patreon, lots of exclusive benefits up there for you as well.